just want to greet you all in the wonderful and our precious name of Jesus. It is the last Sunday of 2023, and I hope you all are excited or we all are relieved. Uh, either way, we have so much to be grateful for, and I think for this year, I think that it's so important that we have gratitude uh, in our hearts, and not only for the good things, I know it's been a year of blessings for so many of us here today, but it's also a time to be grateful for even the trials, the tribulations, and the storms that we may have endured. It is, it is what builds character within us through Christ. Amen. Amen. And even, you know, we may be looking for, in 2024, for restoration from God, and we look to that familiar scripture of Joel 2.25, which talks about God restoring what the canker worm and all of those things that have been taken from us. But further on, or, or sorry, pre the previous scriptures and the, the verses above that also states that we need to come with repentance. Uh, I think we always focus on one scripture and we don't read it in full context. And uh, every promise in the word of God, we may be standing here today and looking at the year 2023. You know, God, you promised me so many things and we're on the last day of the year. But we also need to remember that every promise is attached to some command, some instruction from God. And it is up to us to be obedient to those commands in order to access those promises. Amen. Amen. We're going to get in terms of worship and praise and just to have a thankful and grateful heart unto the Lord.
loving a tithe offering.
Amen. We're going to get into a time of worship this morning. We just want to lift up our hands and sing unto the one that has seen us through every season this year. The one that has sustained us through it all. We just want to worship and exalt his holy name this morning. We just want to have a heart of gratitude and thankfulness, O oh Lord, for everything that you have done for us. Just now. 
morning, Abba Father. We want to thank you that you are a miraculous Father. You are an eternal Savior. We just want to bow before you this morning. We want to exalt your holy name. We want to thank you that you have been faithful through the generations and that you are a rock that we can stand on. Oh, we just want to lift up our hands this morning and praise your holy name because you are a good God. You alone deserve all of the glory and the honor. We just want to worship you this morning. We want to thank you, Father. We just want to surrender it all to you as we move into a new, new chapter of our lives. We just want to leave it at your throne, oh God. We just want to worship your holy name and trust in you, oh precious Father. God that loves us beyond all that we could think or imagine. The God that has carried us through. The God that has lifted us up. The God that has healed us and the God that has sustained us. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. So we can stand here today and surrender all to Him because He's a good God, a gracious God, a loving God. Father, we just want to surrender with hands raised to you right now. Unashamed. Unashamed. 
just commit it to you right now. We commit our hearts to you right now, Lord. We just want to connect with you. We want to lay everything aside, all the excitement of the time, and just connect with you. And even from the deep recesses of our heart, we want to say thank you, Lord, for every blessing, for every time that you reached out and lifted us up. When we were broken and down, when we were sick and we were ailing, and we felt that now there's nothing or no one that is able to help us. But you came through in the nick of time. You lifted us up and set us on higher ground. And today we rejoice that we are standing. We rejoice that we can still sing a song of glory to the Lord. That we can stand here today and shout an hallelujah. We can stand here today and say, Our God has broken through for me. Our God has set me on higher ground. My God has lifted me up. Oh, let's give the Lord a clap offering. If you believe that he has lifted you up, if you believe that your God has carried you through, oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your loving kindness, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You may take your seats this morning. Well, once again, uh, it's good to see that in spite of the holiday season, that quite a few have attended our morning service. And I thank you for that, for making your commitment, not to the church, not to the pastor, but you're making your commitment unto God. Amen? Amen? Your commitment unto God. But today I just want to share a short message. It's now 8.46, and I'm hoping by 10 past or maybe sooner I'll be done. But I want you to pay careful attention to what I'm about to say. And I've entitled my message for you this morning, even knowing that it's the last Sunday of 2023, I've entitled my sermon, The Scales of Reality. I'm looking at a title, looking at a word that I could just share with you today and also keep some reference to what I'm going to share with you this evening or rather uh, at our watch night service, that there'll be a tie-in. The scales of reality. And we know that 2023 for many of us has been, in some cases, a difficult year. Many have been battling with health. Many have been battling with uh, finances. Many have been battling with employment. And there's so many things that we know that people have been challenged with. But the fact that you are seated in church today, you have overcome. Amen? You have conquered what the devil was trying to do to you. You overcame every obstacle. You overcame every plan that the devil was planning against you. You overcame by praying to the God that will always be faithful. And because of our faithful prayer, God has seen us through. That we can stand here today. And therefore, sometimes, and I just want to share my heart with you, I feel a bit disappointed when I see the church not as full as it should be. Because this is the time we need to come before God and say, thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. Thank you, Lord, for carrying my family through. Thank you, Lord, for doing the thing that I thought was impossible. Thank you, Lord, that when I thought I was broken and my back was against the wall and I could move no further, or can I go no further backwards, if there's any sense in that. But you know what I'm saying that God came and made a way for you. And that's why I thought today would be a day of thanksgiving, a day of rejoicing as we pause during this time. And it happens to all of us during the last few days of December, the last few days of 2023, when we come to the place of reflection, we come to the place of uh, doing a, a self-examination. 
and introspection, we come to that place to say, Lord, and we weigh everything in the scales of reality. When we put it on the scales of reality and we say, Lord, what has happened during this year? What has happened during this year? And there's so many things that happened this year. And we try to make an assessment of this year, whether this is 2023 has been a year of success or whether it's not been a year of success. And throughout that introspection, and only you as an individual can do that introspection. We look at things, the peaks and the lows. There were certain times during the year that you were on a lofty ground or lofty heights and you were there and you were enjoying things. And then you went to your lows and suddenly you felt that the pains of depression. You felt the uh, pains of failure and you felt, oh, what is happening? Something is happening this year. Something is happening to me. I cannot overcome this lows. And then you ask yourself, what could we have done better? Or what have we engaged in that has brought us to this point? And those questions will keep hammering you. Those questions will keep coming against you. Blow after blow coming against you. And then you come to the realization as you've looked at the highs and the lows and the difficulties that you had to overcome and you put it on the scales of reality and why I call it the scales of reality, you and I will always have to take things and put it on the scales of reality. Where you are not determining what, is, what has been successful or not, when you put it on the scales, the scales will tell you whether you have been found, you've been found wanting or whether it's been truly a good year. Now, I don't know whether you've put your life, uh, whatever has happened during this year, you've put it on those scales. But I want to tell you that for many, for many, and I'm just generalizing right now, for many, when we put all our achievements and all our failures in the scales of reality, many of us will find the scales have been tipping on the wrong side. Now, I can generalize because I speak to many people. I counsel many people. I give advice to many people. And when you hear people cry and pour their hearts out to you, and then you realize for many people, the scales are tipping on the wrong side. On the wrong side. Now, you can say, Thank you, Lord, if your scales are even and if your scales are in the positive side, you can give the Lord a clap offering or you can shout an hallelujah. But I want to speak to the general populace that are out there that often the scales are on the wrong side. And when everything has been put onto the scales of reality and you come to that position and you start to ask those questions, but why is this happening to me? I've been faithful to church. I've been faithful to uh, my prayer life. I've been faithful in every area that has been asked of me. I've been faithful to God. But why am I still finding myself on the wrong side of the scales of reality? Why? And sometimes that can be a devastating blow I've been faithful to God financially. I've given to the poor. And you've been ticking the boxes and saying, yes, I've done all of this. I've done all of this. But why am I on the wrong side? Why am I on the wrong side? And that's why when you do an introspection, everything is revealed. Everything is revealed. And you will find you come to a place and instead, instead of asking why, someone said these beautiful words, many people look at things and ask why, but I look at things that never were and ask why not. And maybe we should be asking why am I in this position? On this last 
day of 2023? Am I going to carry the same pains? Am I going to carry the same burdens? Am I going to carry the same challenges of 2023 into 2024? I say, no, sir. No, sir. No, ma'am. We're not going to do that. We're going to release all those things of negativity. We're going to leave it aside. And we sang that beautiful song, Looking to Jesus. And we will start to look unto Jesus. We lay down every weight and sin which does so easily beset us. And we will look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. That's what we'll do. We're not carrying any baggage. We're not carrying any burdens. We're releasing it and saying, 2023, you keep it. Because 2024 is a year of fulfillment in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fulfillment. So we come to that place right now. After questioning all things. You know, we come to that place and we start to reason. And we say to ourselves, we followed all the things that were required, the rules and the mandates of the church. But sadly, sadly, we failed by not allowing ourselves and our decisions to be defined by the word of God. And 2023 was being declared a year of definition. We said in 2023, we will define everything. We'll define who we are in Christ Jesus. We will define ourselves according to the word and not according to what man is telling us. We'll define ourselves strictly to the word of God. And today, if we are answering the question that we are on the wrong side of the scales of reality, I want to ask you, have you looked at the word of God and why we are in that position? Now, if you have your Bibles, and I'm going to go through this quickly, a familiar portion of scripture. A familiar portion of scripture that you know so well. And I'm not going to go and do an in-depth uh, exegesis on this passage. But I want you to read it and it's self-explanatory. Because as I was reading this portion of scripture, and I want to tell you for those that are discerning, one of the, uh, in this entire passage from Luke chapter 6 to uh, 37 to 42, you will find one of the key verses is going to point to our banner for 2024. So if you are discerning, you can look at I'm not going to tell you. I'm just going to read through this and I'll do just highlight a few points. So as we said, many of us have ticked every box. Many of us have done what is required of us by the mandates of the church and the rules of the church and the rules of uh, Christianity. And we've ticked the boxes. But what have we missed out? What have we been doing? And maybe unknowingly, what have we been doing? that have caused us not to receive the full potential of what God has installed for you. The full installment of what God has already laid aside for you. Why have we dropped the ball and not received it? Because God has already laid it for those that believe in him, that those that ask in his name is already laid up for them. So why have we not accessed it? So as I was looking at this portion of scripture, and let's read through it, you've heard many sermons on it, sermons on it. But I want to remind you again on this last day of 2023. And I want you to listen or read and follow intently. Now this, Luke is recording, it's another it's his version of the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus was giving direction to the church. And he says, do not judge and you will not be judged. Amen? Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. I'm just going to take them in like threes. Forgive and you will be forgiven. 
Now, maybe you've ticked the boxes with every uh, requirement of church. You've done well in that area. But maybe, sadly, we neglected the word of God. Are we been judging? Are we been pointing fingers? Have we been condemning people? Have we been uh, unforgiving in our spirit? That is the question. And maybe that is the reason why we haven't received the blessings of God to the measure that was planned for you. You know, it's a serious thing to judge. And I know you've always heard me in the last few weeks. I've been talking about judging and all of that. So don't think I don't have anything better to say. But I want to remind you because maybe that is where we are falling down. That is where we are tripping up. And that is where the area the devil is allowing us to miss out on the blessings of God. We all have views. Amen. And that's it, good. Every person must have a view. He has to have an independent opinion of whatever situation is presented before him. But at the same time, it doesn't give you the authority to judge anyone because judging is only for God to do and not us. Sometimes we don't even know the full story and we are passing judgment. Sometimes we don't know the full story and we are condemning. We are like the mob that was around the lady that was caught in the act of adultery. And they all picked up a stone and were ready to hurl it at her. They don't know the full story. And I all know all that I know what the Bible is telling me. Yes, she fell short. She was an adulteress. Worthy of stoning according to the law. But according to the grace of God. Jesus says something else. You see, we cannot throw that stone. We cannot condemn her because of the sin. Because we stand condemned already by the nature of our own selves. We stand condemned. Only thing, she was caught and we haven't been caught out. That's what Jesus was saying. Now he is without sin. Take up the first stone and cast it at her. And suddenly... We look back and we say, can I do that? Have I committed adultery in my mind? And Jesus said, if you think it, you've already done it. How can I take that stone in early at her? But yet, they condemned her. They were about to throw the stone, which means she's condemned. But for the grace of God. So maybe we are falling short, brothers and sisters, because we are judging, we are condemning, and we are not forgiving. We are not forgiving. We've done everything else right. We put it on the scale, but we still found wanting. Maybe as we walk into 2024, we say, I'm going to look at the word of God. I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to condemn. And I'm going to forgive. I should have heard amen for that. Maybe I'll drink some water while you think about it. Verse number 38, give, and it will be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. Now when we read that verse, that has become the anthem for every offering. Amen? That's be the anthem. Now everyone has to sing that. Give and you'll be given back to you, pressed down, shaken, and running over. But yet, what is God saying in this verse? It's talking about giving maybe to those that are less fortunate. Not necessarily giving your finances to the church. But yet we've taken the scripture and we've destroyed it of its true content. 
giving, sharing. How many of us, brothers and sisters, talk to me now? We'll cook extra curry at home. We will leave it in the fridge when we could have given it away. Ah, we'll have it no next week. We don't have to cook. We'll have it. Till it just lies there, lies there, and suddenly on bin day, into the bin. I'm saying you got to have now, you have to have that culture of giving, of giving, sharing, sharing. And maybe every time you topple that food that was good, you topple it into the bin, God says, minus five. And we keep minusing. When the scale, it comes to the scales of reality, suddenly you realize you're being weighed down because you were not prepared to give. <coughs> Four, with the measure you use, it will be measured unto you. He also told them this parable. Can a blind man lead a blind man? Will they not both fall into a pit? Can a blind man lead a blind man? And let me tell you, and I want to say this today on the 23rd, or on the 31st of December, 2023. I see so many posts, Christian posts now I'm talking about. We seem to be following personalities rather than following Jesus. And some of these guys, when you look at it, and even girl, ladies as well, and you look at what they are saying, it is not in keeping with the word of God. And I'm not saying you mustn't follow people. I'm not saying that. Follow them if they are following Christ. That's what Paul did. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 1, he says, follow me even as I follow Christ. That was the criteria. And if they are not following Christ, then don't follow them because you'll be like the blind leading the blind and both of you will fall into a pit. <coughs> a student is not above his teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like his teacher. We won't go into that. I'll tell you why I don't want to go into that because if I go into that, it's going to cause a problem. You know why I'm saying that? Because always, somewhere, everyone will come and say, Pastor, what you said is wrong. And when you speak to them, they don't know the word of God. Verse 41, and I'm drawing to a close. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? Maybe we've been spending so much time looking at the speck in our brother's eye that we fell short in looking to the word of God. How can you say to your brother, brother, and this is, you know, when you look at general Christianity, the general Christian, brother, let me take out that speck in your eye. Let me tell you about what is right and what is wrong. Let me do it for you. You don't know. You're walking in darkness. We're walking in the light. Let me sort it out for you. But you stop to think about the plank in your very own eye. This is for dramatic purpose while you're thinking about what I'm saying. The plank in our very own eyes. Brother, let me take out that speck out of your eye when you yourself fail to see the plank in your own eye. 
You hypocrite. The word of Jesus. You hypocrite. First take out the plank out of your own eye. And then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So maybe as we come to the close of 2023, maybe it's time now that we need to remove the speck from our very own eyes. Even we've got the better part of 12, maybe 15 hours. And maybe during the 15 hours, we start to pull out the plank from our very own eyes. And then we go into 2024 with our eyes clear that we can see everything more clearly. We can see the word of God more clearly. We can see our brothers and sisters' situation more clearly. We can see our own faults more clearly. But if we do not remove that plank from our very own eyes, 2024 will just be a repetition of 2023. Same mistakes, different year. Same problems, different year. Same pain, different year. So let's lay aside every weight and sin which doubt so easily beset us and run with patience the race that he set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Let us bow our heads. Father, we come to you on the last day of 2023. We come to you with thanksgiving in our heart for all that you've done for us. In spite of our uh, misdeeds, uh, in spite of us falling short, it is your grace that has carried us through. It's your grace that has been with us. In spite of the scale being tipped against us, it's your grace that has leveled it for us that we might face 2024, that we may go into the new year knowing that if we heed to the word of God and we listen to the word of God and we hearken to the word of God, that we will be able to go into 24 seen clearly after we take the determined step of pulling out the plank from our very own eyes. And 2024 will be a year that we can see opportunities because our eyes have been cleared. We see the opportunity of becoming prosperous. We see the opportunity of becoming more faithful. We see the opportunity of serving God more. We see the opportunity of becoming better people. We see the opportunity of becoming a better representation of ourselves in the likeness of God. We see that. So Father, I pray, Lord, that even as the hours may be drawing and the curtains may be following, Falling, it will still be a time of introspection, a time of examination, so Father, I pray today, Lord, that we will be blessed, that 2024 is going to be a year of what we make it to be. And the word of God tells me that those that are faithful to God will be blessed. And I say to you today, we will be blessed because of our faithfulness to Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, once again for that timely message to us. And uh, we trust that God will help us to pay heed. Amen. Good morning. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus this morning. Yes, the date is the 31st, New Year's Eve. Some of us said it's 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. <laughs> we'll figure that out. Amen. And a uh, very warm welcome to you, and uh, 
We see Taryn Marshall as well with us this morning. God bless you, uh, all three of you. And uh, <laughs> okay, the baby as well. And to all our wonderful people who are here this morning, and uh, congratulations. It's not easy, I know. <laughs> we know the struggle, especially during the festive period to be found in the house of the Lord. But you made it here. So, so God richly bless you this morning. Uh, notices for the week are as per usual in terms of some of the notices. Our uh, watch night service tonight will commence at 10.30. And uh, we're trusting that uh, many of you will be able to attend. Uh, I just want to throw this in. I thought about this a little earlier, actually, during Christmas. You know, the Bible... Um, predicted, foretold, prophesied that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. Isn't that so? Thou Bethlehem and you know, the rest of it, out of you will come. The same Bible uh, prophesied the second coming of Jesus. And God forbid, I say, please, Lord, don't come on New Year's Eve. <laughs> hey, some of us might be caught napping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, the Lord bless you, and if you are able to be in church tonight, we know it's, it's a late hour, uh, but wherever you are, try to enter the new year in prayer. Amen. Um, so our morning services as for next week as well will be at 8.15. Um, the praise and worship team, I'm sure they will meet during the week for the weekly practice. And... Um, uh, may I just pause here as well for a moment. Actually, this came upon me as we were worshipping, just to pay tribute to the praise and worship team. I don't think it will be out of place for me to do that, or uh, miss. And uh, we know that the praise and worship team is pivotal to any church service. And it takes a lot, the praise and worship team and the media team, for them to prepare themselves uh, so that they could come here and lead us. And uh, we know many of them work, some are studying, some are working and studying. And to juggle your time around for the whole year, that's also sometimes being dogged with the, with the illness that comes off and on at times. Uh, it becomes quite a challenge. And yet, they have held the fort. Amen. Uh, all, each one of you. So each one of you, God bless you. Praise and worship team. We do appreciate each one of you. We know the struggle. I know the struggle because there was a time when I stood alone here with the guitar and sat the previous night for about six hours preparing six songs. You'll wonder why from nine o'clock to sometimes three in the morning you're just praying and asking God, give me something to choose the right six songs. I've been through it, so I know what it is. And uh, therefore, I want to just compliment the praise and worship team. Let's give them a round of applause. I think they've done well. Right. Not taking anything away from the rest of the departments of the church, okay? To pastor and the rest of the members of the church as well. Thank you for your, your efforts and your contributions uh, in uplifting the name of the Lord, even in this uh, part of the vineyard. Um, just to move on very quickly, we... Always remind, I've done it for the whole year, we have done it for the whole year, reminded ourselves about prayer, praise, worship, and thanksgiving to, the God, uh, to God. This is the last Sunday, allow me to say it one more time. Amen? Do not neglect that area of our lives. Prayer, praise, thanksgiving, and worship to God, and you know the various needs that we bring before the Lord, especially the unsaved as well. Amen? Um, then with the birthdays and other celebrations, we know that uh, today is our dear sister Sadna's birthday. How she looked forward to this day the whole year. She waited the whole year. <laughs> Amen. So God richly bless you, sister Sadna, on your birthday. We thank you also for your time here at church. And even the family is here with you. Uh, God bless them as well. Amen. And may God continue to bless you, prosper you with good health and happiness. Uh, today also happens to be our brother Morgan's birthday. Brother Morgan, who's uh, the key man in terms of the building at the back, right? He's been assisting us uh, for many, many months, uh, more than a year, 
And we just want to also wish him, he's not here with us this morning, but I think we'll probably give him a, a, a call and just wish him as well. Amen. And then, of course, um, just a little correction. I know I kept saying Leanne and Leon's uh, wedding anniversary on the 28th of uh, December. And uh, I think because I had the name Leanne and in brackets I had Leon to refer to which Leanne this was, I thought it was an anniversary, but he corrected me and said, no, it's Leanne's birthday that was on the 28th, and their anniversary is on the 8th of January. Got it right? 8th. Okay, thank you. So we just want to wish you as well, uh, Leon and Leanne, for the 8th of January. Amen. Um, more or less cover the news, uh, except one more, and that is uh, the 14th of January, Pastor. It's a Saturday. Right, the 14th of January, which is a Saturday, has been earmarked for all workers, leaders of the church to meet uh, at the church for what we may call like a workshop. And pastor has given it a title, uh, Direction 24. Right, Direction 24 for the linguists. The language specialists amongst us, you may say direction. They normally use the word direct, to direct. Okay, so direction 24, it's open to everybody. We are all co-workers in the vineyard, amen? So it's open to everybody. It will be a, a bit of a, like a workshop uh, directing us uh, to what we plan to do for 2024, Amen. Uh, from around about 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock, followed by hopefully a lunch. Uh, so all are welcome, and uh, we need your inputs. The church needs workers, right? And uh, nobody is disqualified when it comes to that. So we need to all come together. So the reason we're mentioning this date very early so that you'll be able to diarize it, okay? And... Uh, if there's any significant problem with the date, then please uh, whisper it to Pastor, one of us. And if there's a need for a slight change, maybe we can adjust it. Okay. So, 14th of January, that's a Saturday, uh, we will meet at the church. Amen. I think that concludes the notices. And have a wonderful, I'll pass the indicated rightly, I think 15 hours or so left of this 2023. God bless you. And keep safe. Amen. Shall we rise up to our feet even as we would pronounce a benediction? Let's raise our hands to the Lord in acknowledgement of who He is to us. He is our supreme God. He is our Father. And He is the director of our steps. And now we pray that the blessings of the triune God will rest and abide with each one of us. Till we meet our Lord and Savior in the clouds of glory, we wait with that blessed assurance that God will fight for us and God will lead us through and God will guide us in the year to come. And all God's people said, Amen.